Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join this webinar today. The topic today will be how to build an M4 IOM workflow in just 20 minutes. My name is Jason Levick and my background with M3 dates back actually to the 90s when I was a customer implementing MoveX. I since then worked for Intentia uh, and now for the last 15 years been with Comactivity. Just for some background, Comactivity is the leading M4, M3 service provider here in Australia. We're also a gold channel partner of M4. Our heritage is very much in delivering value through technology platforms. And we have a focus on staying very much at the forefront of M4 technology and more recently with M3 Cloud Edition. We're currently delivering these services here locally in Australia and New Zealand, but also in Asia Pacific, the US and Europe. So today I'll be joined by Christina Verko. How are you, Christina? Good, thanks, Jason. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that's good. So Christina is one of our uh, senior technical consultants and also does quite a bit of TPM work for us. Christina has also worked for Intenture and now with Comactivity for many, many years. So just in terms of um, housekeeping before we start, the main thing really is around questions and answers. So we will have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You, you should see a panel to the right of your screen. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, please submit them there at any time and we'll refer back to them at the end of the session. Just in terms of the agenda for today, uh, we'll be obviously going through a bit of an introduction. We'll talk through the problem that we're going to solve, the problem definition, how we're going to solve it. Then we'll take you through the demo of, of how we solve it in software. Uh, Christina will work through some frequently asked questions and some tips. And then we'll move into a Q&A session. So in terms of the introduction, just wanted to highlight before we kick off that in this webinar, we'll actually go into quite a bit of detail. And so it's a bit of a deep dive, really. So don't worry as you go through, if you miss something, we'll be sending you a copy of this webinar as a video after the after it's completed. So just in terms of introduction, what is the definition of a workflow? Well, a workflow is a sequence of industrial, administrative, or other processes through which a piece of work passes from initiation to completion. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? So we will actually be using software to control that workflow um, and in this example it's the ION workflow software that we'll be using. So why use workflows in software? Well what we're trying to do with workflows is to move away from physical processes with paper or folders on desks um, which will bring some efficiency. It'll also reduce time between tasks and there's no longer any searching required to find my work. Uh, it'll be delivered to the to the individual or to the team. And, and no longer any ad hoc process involved. Workflows can be monitored and followed, increasing the governance and accountability around tasks. No more slipping through the cracks. And because it can be done in the ERP, it's tightly integrated and using the collaboration platforms, it becomes easy to use and follow. So now we're actually gonna take a look at what is the specific problem we're gonna to solve today with workflows. So what you can see on the screen is a process diagram. And the problem that we're solving today is uh, a situation where a customer order comes in to the system and that customer order can come in multiple different ways, manually entered, EDI, through an e-commerce platform, et cetera. And the, through the order process, it's taken the order on stock because the customer's credit limits have been exceeded. So this is, this is a typical process of what might happen in, in organizations today and those who are watching may relate to this. Uh, at, at some point, during the day or multiple points, the customer service team will, will do some checks to see if they can find any of these orders on stock. If they find one, they'll actually go into the order, do a check uh, to see if any payments have come in overnight running an M3 process to check that. If that succeeds, they can then go on and release the customer order, uh, which becomes then released and ready to go. If it's not successful, they need to communicate with the finance team. And that can happen through phone calls or emails. And the finance team picks up that task. They then go and call the customer. Hopefully they try and sort the issue out. If it's sorted out, they can then release the order, which then it becomes a released order. And that would, on, on, in that scenario, would email the customer service team to let them know that that had been released. If it hadn't been successful, they would put that order on hold and follow up at a later stage. So there's two points to, to monitor here or to highlight is that 
in this particular process, two communications were needed between customer service manager and finance team, and they were manual communications. And there were two touch points where a user needed to go in and look up and release a customer order. So, you know, there's a manual exercise of going in and finding things and doing things. So how do we solve this with, uh, with a workflow? So this process diagram is now uh, designed with the workflow in mind and everything where you see in blue there is controlled by the workflow. So it's exactly the same situation. Customer order comes in, goes on stop. And instead of there being a user to go find, a task is created uh, using uh, Event Hub or, or, or BODs within the system. And that task is then turned into a workflow and becomes a task that goes to the customer service team. They then pick up that task and drill in and, and do their checks. And again, it goes through a, 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 did it succeed or not? If it does, they can release it. If it doesn't succeed, they can, in the workflow, say it didn't succeed, that automatically pushes the task to the finance team. They pick up that task in their, in their workflow panels, go and communicate with the customer uh, and define the outcome in the workflow itself or on the task. And if the outcome was successful, the workflow itself will release the uh, customer order and go, um, and then a notification will go back to the customer service. If it's not successful, the order can then go on hold and that workflow in that case can actually be left there for follow-up and um, it, it can be executed at a later stage. So the key things here is that M3 database actually triggers the workflow. So on an event of the being a customer on stop, it creates that that bod and that bod then, then gets picked up in the workflow. The communications between customer service and the finance team are all automated through the workflow and all of the touch points back into M3 come out of the workflow. So there's no searching, no need to understand where I need to find this information. It just takes you straight there. And then the second point there, we've automated the release of the work, the, the order on the finance side where when releasing uh, we're saying it's successful, it'll actually release the order without them having to go into M3 at all. So that's the solution. What, we're, what I'm going to do now is hand over Christina, and Christina's going to take us through how we actually execute that. Thanks, Jason. And just before we start the demo, I'll go through some of the ION terminology, but we'd encourage that you don't get too lost in the lingo. If you're not already working with ION, there's a few new concepts to know about, but what we want to show today is just how easy it can be. To start experimenting with workflows in your Info OS environment. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, so when we talk about ION, that's just Info's integration and workflow application, and it's where we'll be showing our development today. BODs are the business object document XML messages that M3 sends through to ION. Drillbacks are simply links to our M3 functions. And a logical ID is the info OS tag to reference the M3 application. So we use those in our drillbacks. An accounting entity is simply your M3 company and division. And finally, ION APIs is the new framework for calling M3 APIs from ION. So for our de de uh, development demo, we decided it might be better to show you a recording of that part, just as it's challenging to talk and type, but I'll demonstrate the workflow running interactively. So what we'll be showing is firstly, the development of our workflow to manage our process. After that, we'll need to create an activation policy, which will look for the specific conditions under which a workflow will be started. So as Jason mentioned, we'll be using the M3 sales order board and we'll use that as our trigger based on the existence of a credit limit stop code on that board. So jumping into our demo, we're working in the ION Desk application and we start by adding a new workflow. We'll just give it a name. And before creating any of our workflow components, we can start by adding all of our workflow properties. 
So firstly, what you're seeing here is I'm just adding the input parameters that should come from our sales order board. So these will include all of your order and customer details. And when we get to our credit stop code, not all order sales order bods will have a credit order stop code. So we need to set the user initial value to null just so that it doesn't create errors in ION for those bods that don't have a stop code. And a final, finally, we just add our accounting entity and logical ID fields. So now that we have all the input parameters, the next step will be to add any parameters that we want to use within the workflow. And you'll see how we make use of these during the workflow creation. The next workflow set property to set up is our drill back. So Jason talked about the flow needing a drill back to OAS 120. And we can use our standard customer order view for that drill back. Now, some of the settings might look a little bit complicated for the M3 drill backs, but they really are pretty consistent for every M3 link. So if you have a standard view there already, it can be quite straightforward to set up. It helps though to know your M3 tables and key fields in this process. And do feel free to refer back to this recording if you're setting up drillbacks for yourself later. So we're going to use option two. We want to do an edit in OAS 120 and just look at the e-panel. And just these last three fields are defining our accounting entity and they're always set up the same way for M3 links. So now we can start developing our process. And the first step will be to set our company number parameter from the first three characters of the accounting entity. We can do this with an expression in the set parameter component. And you'll see here, I can just use control space bar to select parameters inside the expression. So now we'll create our first task, which is for the customer service manager to alert them that an order is on credit stop. And I'll set the message for the user here. And again, just retrieve the parameters from control spacebar. So we've got order for customer is stopped on credit limit. Now in the content area, we'll just add all of the parameters that the user should see on their task. And I'll set them to read only as we don't need them to be editable for this workflow. Finally, I'm adding the OIS 120 drill back link and just changing the label. In the action section, we add all of the actions that the user can take and these will define buttons. We'll give him one option to select done. If he goes to OIS 120 and does an invoice refresh and finds that the customer's now under the credit limit, he'll click done. And if he needs to send it to finance, he'll click customer follow-up. And our values get saved to that customer service action parameter. Finally, we'll distribute our task and I'm just picking the customer service managers group here. And we'll do one more thing in this task, which is to save the ID of the user who actioned it and we'll use, reuse that later in the flow. So the next step is to add the logic for that follow-up action that the user has taken. And we can do this by adding a decision to our flow and just setting the condition on that follow-up selection. 
When the decision evaluates to true, we're going to send a new task to our finance group and advise them that a credit follow-up is required. So I'm just letting the finance user know that credit follow-up is required on this specific customer. For this task again, we'll go to content and just select any details that we want to give the user on his task. This user will also have two actions. Depending on the result of the discussion with the customer, we'll give him the option to release the order automatically or to leave the order on hold. Here again, the value that's assigned to our button is updated to that finance action parameter above. And the distribution of the task will just be to our finance group. And these groups can all be defined within your InforOS framework. So we'll add just one more decision to run our API and release the order whenever the user selected the release order button. So when that condition evaluates to true, we'll want to add our OAS 120 API call. So now I'll, I'll add the ION API component, which is a, a great new feature in the recent releases of InforOS. I select the product and the API name, and we're going to look for the update CO stop transaction. Finally, we retrieve our service account which is just a setup for the user who's going to run this API. Now it's a very simple API. It's got three inputs. We'll need to add our order number and our company number. And finally, we'll just set the stop code to blank. And when that runs, it will set the order stop code to zero. So the final step in our flow is just to add a notification for the customer service manager who actioned the first task. We'll just let him know which action finance have taken in the previous step. And we'll show notes from previous so that if the finance user has added any comments for the customer service manager, he or she can see them then. This time when we distribute the task, it'll be based on a single user and using our parameter. And now we can save and activate the workflow and move on to create our activation policy. So in activation policies, we'll add a new one, give it a name and select the workflow that this one should start. Now every activation policy is listening for a standard or maybe custom BOD. And here we'll select the M3 sales order standard BOD to trigger our workflow. If you recall all of the inputs to our workflows, these fields need to be pick up, picked up in attributes from the BOD. So the mappings might look complicated, but they're all very well defined in the M3 output BOD mapping document. So I'm just re retrieving 
our reason code, which is the credit stop code here. Some customer details. We needed a number and a name. And finally, the order amount. I'll just rename a few of the fields. It makes it easier to read and for people to maintain later. And once we have all of these attributes, we can go to our workflow parameter mapping and check that we have every attribute needed for each of our parameters. So once we've done our mappings, the final step is just to create the conditions for triggering the workflow. And he will set the condition to trigger on the existence of a credit stop code, which is the reason code attribute in our BOD. So anytime a reason code exists, we'll trigger our workflow. Once the condition's done, we can set that up as our rule and then save and activate the activation policy. So it was very fast. Uh, you will be able to look at the recording again, but what we've done here in less than 20 minutes is created a workflow with three user interactions and two M3 touch points. So there was a task to our customer service manager to check the order via a drill back to OIS 120. Next, he can send the task on to finance for a customer follow-up with an API call to release the order if he selects to do so. And then finally, a notification to our customer service manager. After that, we created our activation policy, which triggers the workflow. And here we're looking for any sales order bods where a credit stop code exists. And if it does, we start our workflow. So now we're just going to move on to the live portion of our demo, which is creating a customer order that's on credit stop and select and testing our process from there. And in this scenario, I'll be the customer service manager and Jason will be the finance manager. So we're now signed on as me, the customer service manager, and I'll start by creating a new customer order. As you can see, the customer's already over his credit limit three. We'll just give him one line for $100. Exit the order. So now we have new order 434. And if I display that one now, we can see that the CO stop code is set to three. So when this order hits the database, the sales order BOD will be generated from MEC and sent to ION. And that BOD will have a credit limit three value in the reason code field. Our activation policy is looking for that reason code and when it's set, it will trigger our workflow. So it generally takes up to a minute to trigger and we can check now I've got the tasks utility app in the context app area. So I'll reload that now to get an update. And we have our new task for order 434. So the first thing I'll do is assign the task to myself and then follow the drill back to credit stop. In OAS 120, we can see that the order stopped on credit limit three. The limit is $15,000, but the customer is already uh, over $1,000 over that credit limit. If there were any payments made since yesterday's nightly run, 
that might not be showing yet on the backlog. So I'll just choose the refresh invoice amount function. But as you can see, he's still over his credit limit. If at this point he was now under, I could take the option to set the order of stop from here and just complete the flow. But since he's over the limit, I'll send it on to Jason for credit follow-up. Moving on to Jason's session as the finance manager. He also has the task utility app. So I'll do a quick reload of that. And he's received a credit follow-up task. This was sent to the full finance group, but as soon as Jason assigns it to himself, the task is removed from anyone else who's in that group and it's assigned to him. He can see the details about the order. He could follow up at this point with the, the customer. And he can also see details of who's actioned the workflow before him. So at this point, Jason might choose to update some details about what he's checked. He could save that note to his workflow task and then choose to release the order. So as you recall, on the release order option, we set our API call to run the OAS 120 update. And I'll just return to my session where we had the customer order on credit limit three stop. If I refresh that now, the stop has been set back to zero. And as the service manager, I should receive the final notification that our order has been released. And we also have the update from Jason about why he's done that order release. So I click done and that's the end of our workflow process. So before I hand back to Jason, just a few quick uh, frequently asked questions and tips for your own workflow development. And I guess the, the main one that we get from people is, do I need to be a developer or an expert to write on workflows? And hopefully, as you've seen today, the graphical user interface and standard VODs do give us a lot of flexibility to develop workflows without having to be an expert. But it is helpful to have the reference guides for the M3 VODs and event rules and know a bit about the APIs and database. So do we actually need to write any code to build our workflow? Uh, for basic scenarios like we've looked at today, there's really very little coding beyond setting that parameter expression. If you're retrieving data from an ION API call, though, to use inside your workflow, you'll need to know a little bit about how to define JSON path or XPath expressions just to extract data from your API response. And finally, custom BODs and event rules will still need a MEC developer to customise. A few final tips from us. In general, try to use groups or parameters rather than named users in your task. It makes it much easier if people change roles in the business. If your workflow is reliant on drillbacks or APIs, it's a good idea to test them first, just so that you don't spend a lot of time on a workflow uh, without ensuring that critical components are going to work as expected. And finally, something that we'd highly recommend is if you're creating a workflow with a lot of approval logic, there's some fantastic functionality there in the Ion Business Rules that make it much easier to uh, develop those workflows and maintain them externally to the, the workflow definition. 
So Jason, I'll hand back to you now for the conclusion. Yeah, thanks, Christina. That was fantastic. Um, so that brings an end to the presentation part of the webinar. I hope you've seen how easy it is to build Info Ion workflows and achieve the benefits that we described in terms of improved efficiencies, lead time, governance and accountability. So now we're going to move on to answering some of your questions. So I've got a couple of questions coming through. First question, uh, are there templates available that can be used or modified for standard industry flows, workflows? Um, Christina, are you aware, aware of that? That's a great question actually, Jason. Yes, there are a number of uh, implementation accelerator workflows. And so that's probably the best place to start is that if you have access to Implementation Accelerator, have those alerts and workflows all loaded into your ION system. And they can be a great reference too when you're setting up drillbacks and, and the like. Uh, it, it gives you a good example to follow from. Excellent, thanks, Christina. Uh, next question, are there any dependencies on the version of M3 to make use of ION? I think obviously ION will be working on uh, the M3 CE or multi-tenant version of M3, that's for sure, and certainly 13.4. Just not sure, Christina, how far it goes back from there. Are you able to, to answer that? Uh, I believe it was from version 13. It may have been earlier, so perhaps we can get back to you uh, with a definite answer on that one. Okay, yep, we'll come back on, on that one. Uh, some other questions. Can a workflow be started manually by a user um, instead of a, using a bod? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can, you can have a user trigger a workflow manually. And I, I think probably the scenario where this would make the most sense is if you don't already have the transactional data in M3 to trigger a BOD. Uh, so it might be something like a new customer or new item set up. And in that case, we, we have a couple of options. In, in recent versions of Infor-OS, you can actually trigger your workflow from a widget on the homepage. And I recall in earlier versions of Infor-OS, there was a, a mingle tab where we could start workflows as well. So it's just important that the person has access to the flow and uh, they'll just need to enter all of the input parameters when they start up the workflow. Great, thanks, Christina. Okay, another question coming through. If we've developed a workflow in a test environment, how do we deploy that to a production environment without having to do it from scratch? Uh, so from both workflows and activation policies, you can export and import. Uh, so, so we generally like to follow a process of just saving the old versions that you've deactivated to a backup copy so that you can always roll back if required, but then it's just a simple export and, and import into the workflow or activation policy area. So that works quite well. It's just, um, distribution groups and settings like that, that you'll need to set up possibly in each environment or remember to import and export as well. Excellent, great, thanks, Christina. Uh, next question, will workflows work with H5? Well, clearly today we've demonstrated a H5 environment, but what about Smart Office? Can workflows work within Smart Office as well? Uh, yes, they do. Um, so Smart Office had uh, task and alert widgets uh, where you could see all of your workflow tasks and notifications pop up and action them. And, and it was quite good. You have all the drill back access there. I think the only difference is in the Smart Office version, we may not have the ION API call functionality. So that would be something to check in your own version of InfoOS. Excellent, hope that answers that question. Uh, next question, if the standard BOD doesn't have all the data we need, can we use Iron API calls to retrieve data into the workflow? Uh, yes, we, we can definitely use Iron APIs to retrieve data as well as update data. So, 
you would just do a similar call to what we've done today and use a JSON, ex, uh, JSON path expression to retrieve the input that you need out of that API response. The only thing I'd suggest around that though is it's best to make sure that any attributes that need to be in the BOD in order to activate the workflow are there initially so that we're not spawning a number of workflows only to run an eye on API call to check whether they should proceed. But absolutely, yeah, that's that's um, a, a great new feature that we get with Iron API calls in Iron Desk. Great, thanks, Christina. Um, can we can we trigger different workflows by using the same bot? Uh, we can actually. That's one of the good things with uh, the enterprise service bus setup of of Ion is that a single bod from M3 or even from another system can trigger multiple workflows. It could trigger alerts or alarms. It could even trigger interfaces between different systems. Uh, so we've got a lot of flexibility there in how we can use these bods. Great. I think we're coming down to the last question here. So if there's any further questions that you wanted to answer, um, please put them up on your question panel now, but we'll, we'll go to this final question, Christina. Uh, what happens when the people who receive the task are on holiday? So for example, in that example today, finance team uh, or the finance managers on holidays, how would, how would that be managed so that we could get that order off stop? Uh, in Ningle, we do have an out of office setting where, they, where you can say, I'll be away from this period to this period and for each type of task, who do you want to delegate it to? So, um, so for, you know, these credit tasks, I want to uh, delegate them to this person, but for some other workflow, I'm going to delegate to someone else. And so long as that user has the right authority in M3 to do the actions required and, and use the drill backs, then there's no reason why they, they shouldn't be delegated those tasks from an out of office. So yeah, it, it works It works pretty well. Okay, and if, and if to extend that scenario, the person or the people that are receiving the task too busy and the workflow is quite time sensitive, can you escalate based on some, some inactivity? You can, so in the tasks themselves, you can set up to escalate. There is one limitation there that the escalation is based on the manager setting of that particular user. So we don't have a lot of flexibility over how the escalation works. It will only escalate to that one person for the, the person who has, retrieved, has received the task. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Christina. All right, well, I don't see any further questions lighting up here. So uh, what a, we'll bring this webinar to a conclusion. So thanks again for everybody taking the time to join us today. If you have any more questions, you can see on screen there, um, you can send myself or, or Christina an, uh, an email. Um, questions about the topic today, Ion Workflows, or some of the related topics that we've discussed is fine. And if you wanna see the webinar again, I believe it'll start replaying if you stay online, um, or you can um, hop on our website and we'll have the, the webinar there on demand. Uh, from the website. So appreciate your time and have a great Friday.